When the Darwin FPV Baby Ape first came out, it cost about $70, and that kind of scared me off of it. I assumed it was just another not very good flying, not very durable, not very worth a second look, cheap Chinese quadcopter. And I was wrong about that. So many of you guys reached out to me to tell me that this might just be the best value quadcopter under $100. But it's 2022 now. And that $70 quadcopter now goes for $80. And actually, at, at the $80 price point, it's got a really awful camera on it. I'm gonna show it to you later in the video and you can decide if you agree with me or whether I'm completely off base. When you get the camera that I actually think you should get with it, it costs closer to $90 or $95. And that leads to the question. In this day and age, is the Darwin FPV Baby Ape still the best value under $100? I'm Joshua Bardwell, and you're gonna learn something today. The Darwin FPV Baby Ape that I'm reviewing in this video was sent to me by Darwin FPV for this review. I have not received any cash or any other form of compensation in exchange for this video, and no one has had any pre-approval or conditions over the contents of this video before it was released. The Baby Ape fits into a category of quadcopters known as a toothpick. And right now, some of you guys are a little bit annoyed that I said that, because you would argue that a toothpick actually is something more like this. Now, this isn't even the original, original toothpick, which was literally a tiny whoop that they took the tiny whoop frame off of and they put it on a little frame like this and they flew it with their tiny whoop motors. But this is something close to what a toothpick is today. It is an X style frame. It runs typically out of 1S battery originally, and it's got three inch props. But here is what might be my favorite style of toothpick. Because this style, three inch props, yes. Running on 1S battery? No. I flew it with this 450 milliamp hour 3S battery, or you can fly it on a 450 milliamp hour 2S battery to save a little bit of weight and give up a little power, but I was really happy with it on this battery. It has a top-mounted battery, which means it's gonna fly more like a five-inch freestyle quad in terms of its flight dynamics, and for those who are interested in freestyle and fun cruising, as opposed to sort of more racy style flying, this is just a really, really great designed for a quadcopter. Now weight is one of the defining characteristics of a toothpick and this OG toothpick built by Kebab FPV himself, don't come at me in the comments telling me it's not legit. It weighs 45, 46 grams without the battery and 62 grams with the battery. And Kebab says that the sweet spot for a 1S toothpick is right around 65, 75 grams and that's where his ends up. The Baby Ape comes in at 72 grams, 71 grams, without the battery, and 116 grams with the battery. Hey, it's less than 250 grams if you care about that. So there definitely are gonna be people out here who question whether this should be categorized as a toothpick or something else. I'm not so big on semantics. I just really like the way it flies. The motors are completely unmarked, but they are 1104 in size and 4300 kV, according to Darwin FPV's documentation. They have a 1.5 millimeter shaft and the props press on only. Don't let the fact that there are screw holes here fool you. The screw holes do not line up with the T-mount prop. They just press on with friction. And I didn't have any trouble with these gem fan props coming off while I was flying. I have had problems with press fit props coming loose in the past and working their way off, but in this case, at least for the time I was flying it, it wasn't an issue. Now you certainly could ask whether 1104 is the optimal size for a quadcopter of this size and weight. And I would ask you to hold judgment until you see it fly. And that will be sort of the ultimate proof in the pudding moment for that question. The flight controller has an F411 processor on it. And of course we'd all love to see an F7 processor running at the fastest speeds so we could run Betaflight 4.3 at the fastest speeds and take advantage of all those new features. But in a quadcopter at this price, an F411 is, is as much as we can really expect. If you're running Betaflight 4.2, you're gonna be fine running at a four kilohertz PID loop at Betaflight 4.3, you might even have to drop down to a two kilohertz PID loop, depending on what features you're willing to activate. Nevertheless, the quadcopter flies fine as delivered. And again, we're gonna take a look at that flight footage in just a minute. I love it when manufacturers make their customers' life easier by including documentation. It's not the most comprehensive documentation I've ever seen, but Darwin FPV does give you a, a spec sheet and wiring diagram for their flight controller. The flight controller has an S-Bus input pad with an inverter if you're using a free 
Sky or other SBUS receiver, and it has a spare TX1 and RX1 pad if you're using a more modern receiver like Express LRS, Ghost, Crossfire, or Tracer. Personally, I put an Express LRS EP2 receiver in there. That is the whole receiver right there stuck to the top plate, including the antenna. This little gray box here is the antenna. And I'm actually putting these EP2 receivers in all of my micro quadcopters. The small size and integrated antenna makes them so, so easy to mount. Don't let that small antenna fool you. The range of Express LRS is more than you're ever going to need for a quadcopter of this size. I actually made a tutorial putting the Express LRS receiver in there. And if you're interested in following along, there'll be a link down in the video description as always. The video transmitter is mounted here to the top plate. Make sure you keep that in mind. If you take the top plate off to do maintenance, don't tug those wires. Go ahead and just carefully unplug them and watch out for the antenna as well. The antenna runs to this 3D printed holder in the back. And if you just rip the top plate off, you could pull this UFL cable, which goes to the video transmitter. Uh, I'm not a big fan of mounting things to the top plate most of the time for that very reason, but on a quadcopter of this size, I think some compromises are unavoidable. The video transmitter has a zero milliwatt pit mode and it does have smart audio support, so you will be able to change the band channel and power through the Betaflight OSD or any of the other smart audio ways of managing the video transmitter. It goes up to 200 milliwatts, which let's face it, we could hope for more. We've seen quadcopters in this rough size and weight class with 400 milliwatt video transmitters and obviously 400 is more than 200. On 200 milliwatts, you're going to get okay range. Didn't find the range to be exceptional, especially maybe you could upgrade this antenna and maybe help your range just a little bit. Nothing to complain about, but you're not going to be going super far from home or going through 17 different walls on this specific setup. Frankly, I think this setup would actually be right for uh, for SharkBite, for HD0. Like, I think it would be, you could put a 25 millimeter or even a 20 millimeter HD0 video transmitter on here and uh, get super, super range. Let me know down in the comments if that's something you think you'd like to see me do. I don't know. How much interest is there in that kind of thing? The frame is made almost entirely of 1.5 millimeter carbon fiber, except for the arms, which are 2.5 millimeter. Uh, this is pretty standard in this size and weight class. And as far as durability goes, it's unlikely with a quadcopter this heavy that you're going to be just crashing hard enough to just explode an arm. It's more likely that you're going to experience slow degradation and wearing out, wallowing out of screw holes and so forth over the course of many, many crashes. Definitely check your screws after your first and second and every flight because I had, like you can see right here, I am missing two. There's supposed to be four of those. I'm missing two of them because they've fallen out because I went just flying. And when I went and checked, I had several others that were loose. By the way, they are Phillips head screws. They're not hex screws. That's pretty standard on quads of this size because they're lighter. As long as we're under here, if you can't find the USB plug on this thing, it's on the underside. Yeah. It took me a minute to figure out. Now, the last part of this quad we got to talk about before we get to the flight footage is the camera. And the reason this review took me so long to get out is they sent me this quad months ago. I took one pack on the standard camera and I barfed in my mouth a little bit and said, this is, I'm, I'm not reviewing this. Please send me the upgraded camera. And they did. And if you don't believe me, if you think I'm overreacting, Take a look at this sample footage. Here is the original camera. Now I know I've seen footage from the original camera that looked better than this on other people's channel. I'm gonna guess they caught the, the quad on a sunny day or they caught it just right, but this is just the day I went out to fly and this is what the footage looked like. And I was like, this is just so bad. I don't feel like I could have a great time flying. On the other hand, this is the so-called Pro camera. It's the Caddx Ant, which is a well-established, good quality uh, camera in this size class. And uh, I don't think anybody would argue that this isn't better. Now, the big question is, is it worth the uptick in price? Because the Baby Ape is about $80 with the standard camera and it's about $90, $92 with the upgraded camera. I think it's like totally, totally worth the upgrade. And I would strongly recommend you to do it. And in fact, if I just saved you $10 having to buy the camera aftermarket, then can you go down and just uh, hit that like button for me right now as a way of saying thanks. It'll help other people see this video and not make that same mistake. Now, if you do take my advice and get the upgraded camera, you are going to run into a little bit of trouble. First of all, the width of the camera, it's not the standard 14 millimeter width between these two camera plates. I've actually got some little rubber washers that came with the Caddx Ant in here, and it's it's holding it okay, but uh, at first I didn't realize that they needed to be there. And I was like, why is this thing not the right width? The other thing that you're gonna run into is that there is not as much room here. The original camera that comes with it doesn't have plugs. Do you see the plug right here for the camera? And this plug actually bangs into this standoff and you can kind of just go ah, jam it in there and get it 
uh, the up tilt, and it's not a big deal, but it certainly is noticeable. I also want to point out that this is about as much up tilt as you can possibly get with the upgraded uh, Cadex Ant camera. There's plenty more room here where you could get more up tilt, but for whatever reason, it's just, it's bumping up against some part of the frame. I'm not exactly 100% sure where, and you just can't get any more. So if you really love flying at high up tilt, 35, 45 degrees, well, this probably isn't the quad for you anyway, but if you prefer flying at lower up tilt, like 20, 25 degrees for sort of freestyle cruising, it'll be just fine. And I gotta tell you guys, this thing flies really good. They were totally right when they said it flies really good for a little micro. It flies really good. Like, I'm just flying. Especially for a little toothpick quad like this, the absolute kindest thing you can say about it is that it's not getting in the way of what you wanna do with it, that you're just flying and having a good time. And that is especially true for somebody like me who spends most of my time flying five inches. So all of the things that I think to do, the lines that I fly, the moves that I wanna do, there are five inch lines and moves. And normally if I try to fly a little three inch toothpicky quad, I have to, oh, well, I can't put it in a tree. And normally when I fly little three inch quads, I have to really compensate. I have to really think about, oh, it's smaller. It doesn't have the speed. It doesn't have the power. It doesn't have the agility. It doesn't handle like a bigger quad. And no, I'm not, trying to sell you guys that this thing, oh, it just flies just like a five inch. But it is really, it's really nice to fly. It's really nice to fly. I'm so impressed. Like all of the moves that I wanna do are just totally doable. And that is usually not the case for a three inch with me, for me. These big power moves like this it's not, I don't know. I mean, like, it's objectively not a super powerful quad. Oh, hello. <laughs> but uh, it's getting it done. Something about the weight, the power, the props. It's just getting it done. Reasonable handling, reasonable prop wash handling through that. Oh, geez. Okay, so. Okay, so I guess I'm a little spoiled flying DJI and shark bite because I keep flying into these stupid tree branches and not being able to see them. I don't think that's really a slam on the camera. I think the camera is about as good as an analog camera is gonna be. I just think my sort of mental expectation for what I can and can't see is uh, not quite calibrated for analog anymore. Originally, what made the Darwin FPV Baby Ape so appealing was its low price. Not that the quality wasn't there, but it's a lot easier to be judged as good quality when you're also super inexpensive. The question we were wondering at the beginning of the video was, is that still true? With the $90 price of the quadcopter with the upgraded camera, which I think is well worth it, and with the 2022 everything is more expensive now uptick, is this still worth getting? And I think you got to ask, what else is out there at a price of $90 that is better than in this. I'm hard pressed to come up with anything. So if you're interested in picking up the Darwin FPV Baby 8, there's links down in the video description. They are affiliate links. You've heard me talk about that before. I would encourage you to click those links before you make any purchase at the affiliated vendor. But here's the, th the real question that you got to consider. Would you rather pay closer to like $130 for a quadcopter like the uh, Beta FPV HX115LR, which has bigger motors. Is it have bigger motors? It has built-in Express LRS, and it also flies pretty darn good. I did a review of that quadcopter. It's up on my channel. I'll put a link in the video description, as well as a little pop-out card here. As long as you're here at the end of the video, can I also ask you if you'd consider subscribing? You watched the whole video. Did you like it? Subscribing helps make sure that you see more of my content and helps other people see the content as well. Thanks so much for watching. Happy flying.